Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forums. And I'm Joe at J Wonder on the Make Code Forums. And yeah, welcome back. Sorry, I'm on very little sleep uh, because my cat, not the one you've met, Otto, the other one, Breakfast, has developed a superpower. <laughs> um, that's right. So, so a little bit of background, I guess. Um. I adopted a kitten recently. I also have another cat named AutoZone. Um, the kitten is named Breakfast. And Breakfast and AutoZone don't get along right now. We're working on it, all right? But so for the time being, Breakfast is in a room upstairs. He's in that room. And then Otto has the run of the rest of the place. And I keep them separate except for closely supervised interaction things, you know, where I have them together. They, they, usually fight each other, and then I separate them again. The idea of them eventually becoming friends. Um, well, all that went out the window yesterday because Breakfast the Kitten, it turns out, is like some sort of genetically engineered super brain cat and has figured out how to open doors, which is really just really not, a f it's, it's bad for me. Um, so here, I've prepared a video. Here's a video of him oh, doing it. If you're curious. Joey can't see this. No, but I already saw it. Yeah. There you go. Just jumps up. Uh, door's open. And uh, he can do this consistently. It's, um... That's how they get you. Yeah, here it is bigger. Breakfast learn from the game. That is a good point. You shouldn't have coded him to jump if you didn't want him to jump. Well, okay. He, I mean, obviously he can jump. I think it's, what's more notable is he has figured out how to twist the doorknob in such a way that it opens. And so did the cat in the game. They figured out how to shoot the door in the way that it opens. It's Shooting true. the door is much more complicated, I think, than twisting a doorknob. I don't know. I mean, he has to... I don't Eight know. Well, maybe. So anyway, he um, uh, has, uh, like, during our, you know, daily stand-up meeting and everything, I was just like, oh, here, breakfast is coming down the stairs now. And I had to go grab him, take him back upstairs. And everyone's having a real good laugh at this, except for me, um, because uh, it's it's really making my life difficult. Um, he's pinned up in his crate right now, which he cannot escape from. Um, but I don't like leaving him in there, you know? I want him to be free. I want him to climb around and jump and stuff. So I'm going to go hang out the, you know, in the room later. But, um, yeah, the cat's yeah. too smart. Too smart for his own good. I also didn't sleep great, but that's just because I had an early morning meeting with London. I was also up late reading books. Yeah. Well, but I was reading them late because I had been so disrupted for the rest of the day. Sure. Yeah, sure. All right. Anyway. Um. So. My cat never had today? the courage to do something like that. Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> if there is one thing about breakfast, he is not scared of anything. Absolutely not. Otto gets scared of noises and all that stuff. Breakfast doesn't care. He doesn't care about any of that stuff. He'll jump onto the narrowest, most unstable object available, and it will, like, fall out from under him, and then he'll do it again. You know? Because he's like, I'll get it this next time. It's, it's crazy. Anyway. Um, so, uh, we have a bit of a choose-your-own-adventure stream today because we have two options. Um, we can either keep working on our Metroidvania game, which we're, we are going to finish, don't worry. Um, or um, I promised I would do a TypeScript stream this week. So we could do that start today and do that on Friday as well. We're definitely going to do it on Friday, but we can do it today as well if, you know, we'll work on that. And so uh, Joey and I were brainstorming what to do for the TypeScript stream. And Joey, you want to share? Um, we're going to make a big old screen with an operating system in it. And yeah. slap the operating system right on there. Right so on if, there. You've been on, if you've been on our forum, you may know that um, there is a popular category of game, which is fake operating systems, um, which are very uh, charming. I'm not starting another extension. Why did you add that about? I don't know. Um, I, I liked it. It's a good point. It happens. It does happen. Um, so uh, we can make one of those, which will uh, look... You know, it'll just be a silly fun thing. And Lucas says TypeScript game that runs games inside a game. We could also do that. We could make it so one of the little apps, fake apps you can open is a little game that runs inside the game. That would be fun. 
or we could implement a TypeScript compiler yeah. and static TypeScript. Um, so um, that's that's option A. Option B is we keep working on Metroidvania and then we start the, the TypeScript thing on uh, Friday. So uh, the three folks who are in chat, please, you know, let me know. Since you are in TypeScript, it would be easier to implement JavaScript. I mean, TypeScript is also implemented in TypeScript. It got bootstrapped. We are not going to. We are not going to. Uh, so, uh, Q Phoenix says, or code your own programming language. We are not going to do that. That's. It's kind I mean, of fun sometimes. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's a lot of work. Um, we already wrote <laughs> enough of those. That's true. We do kind of already have one. We didn't really write it, but we maintain it. Yeah, I mean, the blocks, kind of, yeah. All right. I took programming languages in college and the grad student programming languages course. And um, those were the two hardest classes I ever took. So, yeah, they're kind of fun. <clears throat> like a game where you can add your own code, sort of like a puzzle game. I guess we could. For an extension, we could do something to make it so we could do a five-second games much easier in the future. Like just write a five-second games wrapper sometime. But yeah. All right. Well, anyway, it sounds like people are interested in us doing the TypeScript thing today, so we'll work on that. And then, um, uh, but we're not going to put a new programming language in it. I'm sorry. Then you can port the Win32 yeah. API. Ooh. No, we're not doing that. I um I just removed PXT WinRT from the code from the main PXT code base a couple months ago, but we can add it back into the static TypeScript code base. All right, we're going to JavaScript. We're going to run a blocks, delete the blocks file. We're just JavaScript today. Oh. Um. So while I get started on this, let's. Uh, hey, Joey. Um. What do you need to, to be an operating system? Um. You need a command line. No, 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 no. A real one. A real one. Um, you need little, you need little boxes with an X in the top left or top right. Stop, Joey. What is the definition of an operating system, please? Huh? It does stuff. Okay, I'll define operating system because Joey is not being cooperative. <laughs> um, so what does an operating system do? Well, it it talks to the hardware. So it generally, it's in charge of managing all of the hardware that is, you know, kind of installed on the computer. So the memory, the CPU, all of those things. And um, uh, all of the programs that run on the operating system, it says, you know, here's what piece of hardware you can use. Here's what piece of hardware you can use. Oh, that one's using being used right now, so you can't use it. You can use this one instead. Um, and it just kind of manages all the programs to make sure they stay in line. Um, now, some other things that operating systems do is a lot of time they can uh, uh, also support multiple things running at the same time. So then you typically have something like a scheduler, which will you know run one program for a little bit of time. Then it'll run another program for a little bit of time. Then it'll run another program for a little bit of time and kind of make sure all of that stuff is working correctly. Um, we're not doing any of that, just to be clear. When we say we're making a fake operating system, we mean fake operating system. We're doing the thing Joey was describing. We're going to have boxes. With X's, probably yeah. a little menu in the bottom left. It's gonna like pop up, and um, see that's what I thought X. you were asking me to describe what we we're gonna do, <laughs> not what the real thing is. I, I I understand the disconnection here. Okay, whatever. My fault. <laughs> I clarified. You were still goofing around. Yeah, I was um, still talking about what we're gonna do. Okay, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, make a function draw a window. It's gonna take in a left, a top. Um, and a uh, width and height. And uh, this is the first thing we're going to do is just, you know, get this this working. By the way, we're going to have like a cursor for our thing. Oh, also, yeah, Joey, you wanted me to do this with a bigger screen. Oh, yeah. Um, can you give me that? Uh, yeah, uh, micro code. Uh, it's in config.json, I think. TS, it's in a TypeScript file. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I gave up right after uh, looking at the list of like 50 files in that repo. And then I started looking at the actual PC Compact packages PR, and then that was a mistake. Uh, it's easy. I don't know how easy this one is to. There we go. And it's. Oh, wow, that is not how it should paste. 
Okay, one second. Let me get it to give me a TypeScript snippet. Joey's learning how to use computers today. Well, it pasted it as a table. Uh, there we go. TypeScripts. It'll be all syntax highlighted too. There you go. That's what you want. Yeah, that's what I want. All right. So um, we demoed this on stream a few times now, but we're going to be doing a um, what the heck? Um, oh, throw away the top, the second and third line, but the rest should be good. What? Oh, I see. Wait, what? What is it doing? Did you expand it? Okay, I'm just going to go. This. See, this is exactly the problem I had, and you were saying Joey's learning how to computer, so. Yeah, well, I'm saying that, you know, this didn't come to me right. You were in charge of getting this to me right, Joey. I copy and pasted it fine just out of my window right here, so I think it's problem between keyboard and chair. You think it's Joey's fault? Sound off in chat, don't fix it. Um, okay, so we are going to quadruple our screen. We're going to do 320 by 240, so just doubling our width and height. And um, uh, so some other things right now. So we're, we're obviously going to need like a draw window API, which is going to draw a window with content in it. This is also going to draw like the little header bar. It's going to draw like all the, the, you know, whatever white space where we actually render the content, all of that stuff. And then, um, uh, then, you know, we'll draw whatever on top of it, whatever program we have running. So um, uh, we're going to be passing around a theme object. And this theme object is going to be so that we can have dark mode in our OS because everyone Ooh. wants dark mode, right? Our, this OS is going to be more complicated than the actual editor, it sounds like. I no, it's not. We're we're this is uh, uh, we're going to be cutting some corners. Don't don't you worry. Okay. Um, okay. okay I'm going to go ahead over here and do um, config.ts so I can just get this namespace stuff out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is this is a very uh, important point. You should namespace this the Richard Thirty Two API. I'm not going to namespace it, but I, if I was, I would do that. Okay. This is not going to be an extension that you can add to a project. I feel like we've said that a lot about extension streams. No, I don't think so. I think usually when I make an extension, it starts out as an extension. I don't. I don't know how many times we've written a game and then converted it into an extension. Like split screen and that's it. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, all right, let's. Okay, so for theme, um, I guess we'll store. We'll do like a background color. Um, we'll do a foreground color. Um, we will do a background like two color. So this is going to be like, I'll just call it background darker, and then um, foreground darker. Maybe so this level. What? A zoom level? We can use the scaling. In the theme? Yeah, like a, that could be a system setting. Like have everything two times zoom. I don't know. Um, um, if you don't think so, then maybe not. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I could see us doing some stuff, but you, you never want to zoom a window, like the actual window Chrome. You want to zoom the stuff in the window, right? Yeah. Unsigned Grant says accessibility going down the drain. Yeah, sorry. We're not doing accessibility today. Accessibility is very important. Something I well, talked I about. Was, about. I just suggested an accessibility feature, and you're just like, no. Shush you. Um, OK. So let's go ahead. We're going to do a, um, OK, let's do. Mm, we're going to just it's, we'll just do game dot on shade for now. Well, we'll figure out what we're, if we're going to do sprites or renderables or what later. So we're going to do draw window at uh, 50, 50. We're going to give it a width of 200. We're going to give it a height of 120. Um, and we're going to pass in 
uh, theme and it's going to be our const test theme equals new theme. We're going to do test theme dot background equals um, and this is going to be just like purple, I guess. So uh, we'll do um, 11 is the purple I want. Test theme. Here's your JavaScript uh, interpreter. Have fun porting that to TS. We already got a perfect JavaScript interpreter, man. That's that's the fun part about JavaScript. You already have a, you just you just run it. Expression ball. Yeah, if we were um, also, we would we would probably take V8. I don't know. But I mean, but if you're in JavaScript, you just exit, right? What? We can, just, we can just get it done. Mm. If we were in uh, JavaScript, we would um, just call eval. Yeah. Besides, that that one has to be written in uh, C++, right? Huh? Which one does? The one that was linked. Oh, no, that's, a, that's JavaScript and JavaScript interpreter. Oh, really? It's written in JavaScript? Yeah. Does JavaScript have email or something? Yeah, it does. That's how we that's how we run the code. That's how we run the simulator. Oh, true. That is how we did that. Um, OK, I want this to be 12. Is 12 right? Do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. Darker three there. OK, so now we um, are going to look at a window and decide if we want to copy it or not. Um, Important first question. Uh, minimize, maximize, and X. Top right or top left? You know, I might use a Mac in my day to day, but you know, we are Microsoft. We'll do. We'll do top right. Or bottom middle, bottom right. We have all sorts of options. True. OK, so let's look at a window. Joey can't see this, but he can if he looks at stream. Um, so I what do we have going on here? Right there. OK, thank you. Um, we have a, um, uh, a header bar. And actually, Chrome is maybe not the best one to look at. Um, what's like a notepad? Notepad is like. Yeah, notepad's a good idea. Call for everything. There you go, notepad. OK, so when we're looking at this, um, we have a top bar. We have the bar that has the name of the app. And um, like Joey was mentioning, we have the minimize uh, full screen and X. Um, then we have uh, a little border going around it. And we have this thing at the bottom, which I think is this exists in a lot of apps, but maybe not all of them. It's pretty common, though. Like I'm looking at OBS and it has it. I don't know. It's a place where stuff can go. Yeah, um, and then we have this little thing to drag the size around, which is fun. Um, there is a border around it, a very thin border. So we will probably do a one pixel border around ours just so you can differentiate it. But then otherwise we have Chrome on top, Chrome on bottom, content, and um, yeah, that's about it. Um, cool. Yeah. Actually, the current minimalistic styling in most OSs is making our job quite easier today. Yeah, um, I mean, this does apply to pretty much everything, right? Like, even if you have like a, a Electron app like VS Code, it does pretty much look like that. It's, it's got a top bar, it's got a bottom yeah. bar. Um, okay, so we're drawing it with the uh, border now. Now we're going to do the Chrome up top, and the Chrome is going to be this purple color. Um, the content is going to be a different color. So Let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to put in, um, oh, we have foreground already, which is good. So um, we're going to put in our, our foreground color. And for this, we're going to have to define like our header height. So let's go ahead and we'll just make a thing. We should probably set foreground color real quick then. Yeah, yeah, we will in just a sec. Uh, um, header height 20. Ooh, boy. Uh, I think 20 is smaller than we think it is, but we'll see. Okay. Is that a foreground? Let's go ahead and um, 
we're going to take this fill rect and we just want to do the header height basically. So instead of doing height minus two like we are right now, we're going to do um, header height. Now we're also going to do that little bar at the bottom. So we're going to do const and footer height. And this one's going to be much, this one's going to be like five. So we will do that right now. We're going to do a fill rect. Man, doing fill recs is definitely much, much easier with um, uh, JavaScript than it is with um, blocks. Speeding through this. Um, footer height, make this footer height, that. And now we are going to fill in the rest of the space with our foreground color. So do that right here. And um, we're going to do uh, left plus one, top plus one plus header height, and um, uh, width minus two. That's good. And then we want this to be height minus header height minus footer height minus two. There you go. Yeah, I guess 20 is a little bit too big. We'll make this. Um, just see what 10 is. Sure, let's do 10. We don't have a ton of screen real estate, so we'll do that. Maybe we should shave a little bit off the footer, too. We'll take the footer and we'll make it uh, a 4 instead of 5. Okay. Could always just make our screen bigger, of course. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and put draw the icons now. So we're going to do the Windows order. We're just going to do X and then uh, the square for restore and then the sidebar, just the straight bar for minimums. Again, really loving the fact that operating systems are so minimal these days. It, uh, this would have been a lot more complicated if we were doing this in, say, Vista or uh, XP. Peek behind the curtain. I spent most of my life using Mac operating systems, so I'm actually not super familiar with old Windows ones. We did have a Windows 95 computer for a while and an XP computer, but then um, then we switched to Mac. My family. Was it ever that complicated? I feel. Yeah. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's let's look it up. It all feels vaguely the same to me, but maybe that's just because I've been on like mo modern-ish for a while. So. Yeah, so Windows Vista had these transparent dealios. Oh, I right. forgot about that. Technically, um, does everything that was just everything was rounded, and then they had like you know more balloony icons as opposed to straight, you know, icons. Well, in fairness, everything is still pretty much rounded, but we can ignore no, it's that. Not. Yeah, I mean, all my windows are rounded. You on a Mac right now? Are you on? I'm on Windows. None of mine are rounded. Huh? Um, are all of yours maximized? No. No. Weird. I mean, no, they're all, they're all just square. They're just sharp corners. Yeah, um, I got, I got uh, and, two or three pixel uh, R on each border radius. I'm sorry, two or three pixels out of how many pixels? Well, of course, but that's not any more than these pictures. The, the, that they must paint about. No, the same look at that. It. That is a that is a hefty border radius right there. Okay, one second. Let me take a screenshot of my of my border radius on Teams right now. Yeah, please do. That's this is look at that. That's round. That's pretty round right there. All right, Joey has sent me screenshot which I'm now reviewing. Just because I have a 4K monitor doesn't mean that the top right left corner being like a, a five pixel roundedness is not rounded. What the heck is uh I guess you're on Windows 11 and I'm on I'm on Windows 10. Maybe. I, I think I did get forced to 11 yeah. Yeah I did. I'm waiting for an OS where everything is a circle or an ellipse. Um, yeah, I'll be darned. They rounded everything out in Windows 11. Windows Windows 10 is quite square. Okay. 
squares are overrated. Yeah. I'm waiting for an OS where they just have a random border radius every time you open a window, just so you can feel a little unique. All right, so let's draw our icons. Because we're fancy, we're going to draw them all manually. So um, first, we're going to draw the X. So for that one, we're going to do a screen dot draw line. This is going to be um, left plus width minus. We'll see, we have one pixel for border. We want a little bit of padding. Um, so here we'll do um, fonts, header, uh, right, padding. We'll set this to be five. Um, so we're going to do left plus width minus one minus header right padding. Um, and then for the Y component, we're going to do We'll just do top plus two for now. Um, and we're now going to do for the, the other X, we're going to go ahead and take this business, put that right there, and we're going to subtract whatever we want our icon width to be. So we want our icon to be a square. Nice rule of thumb. So um, to make that happen, we're going to be doing the header uh, height um, minus, let's see, we have one pixel on each top, on on like the top and bottom. So that'll give us um, the header height minus two. So we want to do this minus header height minus two, or plus two, I guess. Yeah. And then for the Y one, we're going to do the, um, uh, top plus two plus header height minus one. And then for the color, we're going to do theme dot foreground. All right, what monstrosity have we wrapped? All right, pretty close. So we're, we're a little bit off. Um, I'm waiting for the next windows that require a circular screen. Do smart smartwatches have like circular screen? Like watch OS must have a circular screen. Yeah. Yeah. What shape are our VR headsets? I've never actually thought about this. Are they they're just a plain screen and it does all the magic? Take apart my PSVR two when it comes. There goes Joey bragging about his PSVR again. Yeah. Pretty soon I'm gonna be doing all my live streams using the little cameras that they have in that for eye tracking. You um, see my high and massive quality. I am a I am a known VR hater. Um, but if I were to do VR, I mean, this I, is the first VR thing I've actually ordered ever. I have an Oculus Rift, which I d despise. Um, all right. Well, anyway, that's a pretty good X right there. Yeah, that's what we wanted. Um, let's go ahead and draw the, so here, let me put in some comments to make this less arcane when we come back to it. Uh, yeah. so close button. Um, next up, we're going to do, uh, maximize. Um, so for this one, we're just going to do screen dot draw rect. And, the um, the watchy border. Nice. I love arcane code. Yeah. Makes me feel like a wizard, right? Um, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do um, header icon width so that I don't have to keep calculating all of this, which is equal to header height uh, minus four. Header height minus four. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that minus right there, do that minus right there, and then do that right there and right there. All right. So we're gonna do draw rect, not fill rect. And this is going to be um, left plus width minus one minus header right padding minus header icon width because we're going to be going to the um, left minus header icon width again. And then we're going to need some spacing between them, but we'll just leave that for now. Um, the Y is going to be the same, so it's going to be top plus two plus, oh, just top plus two. 
Then for yeah. width, we're doing header icon width. For height, we're doing header icon width. And um, uh, for color, we're just going to do theme dot foreground. There we go. It's going to be, yeah, right on the X. Hmm, I, we have like an off by one error somewhere in one of these draw functions. Just ignore it. I can't ignore it. All you need to know is that whenever you're writing your OS, you're going to have bugs. Anytime you're writing any code, you're going to have bugs. That's true. So I think I need to take this header icon width and I need to add something to it. So I think this needs to be header icon width, header width minus uh, two, header height minus two. So there we go. Now see, this one is equally spaced on the top and bottom. And um, we just need to go down here and subtract two from these things we're doing because the I think the draw line is inclusive. It's what's tri tripping me up. Hmm. That's to be minus two and minus two. And um, mm. um, the top is right. The bottom should be one more, I guess. Yeah, it's minus one. Gosh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, this will be well. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, yeah that's it, correct. But oh, we have that, the that issue now. Double, so we, double. Um, we can take the uh, header height. Height minus three. Uh, we'll just make it nine, and then um for this guy because we want it to be okay. Perfect. I think that'll make sense. Yeah. Yeah. That makes more sense. So there you go. Because we, we want it to be like equally spaced on the, the top and bottom. But I'm thinking now we should actually do this header height minus four so we have a little bit more spacing. So there you go. X. Oh, that's a little cute guy. That's a little yeah, cute. They're cute now. Um, and then we will go ahead and um, just, add some should more. We just more. have two as a as a cost for like header padding or something like that because we're gonna have twos all over the place but i guess yeah, that matter. we'll do it so um const header um vertical padding equals two and so this is going to be minus header vertical padding uh times two it's the right shift or oh, the left shift does so it's we're going to do not a bug win mouse support cute os the os for 2020 vision uh, I mean, we're going to have mouse support today, right? We're going to have a cursor on here. Uh, we're not going to do actual mouse support, if that's what you're talking about. We can make it so you interact with this. Can we make this like a, a 2D game where, you, where, we, where we show the monitor for the OS as well, and then there's a little mouse outside, and you, you interact with the computer by moving that mouse with your controller? OK, wait, I messed stuff up. I think I needed to not add that plus. There you go. This is wrong now, though, right? Yeah, uh, I, I uh, do need to. Sorry, I do need to add that plus. And I also need to add it to this one as well. So we get rid of the minus one, get rid of the minus one. That. Now this guy should move down one. There we go. Thank you. And then this should be top plus header vertical padding plus one for the border. And beautiful. OK, finally. Now we're going to go ahead and do uh, header icon spacing. I probably should have done this in a namespace. Well, we might convert it later. I so mean, gonna, you can just, you just put it in a namespace at any time. That's not an issue. Yeah, it is not correct. Um, and we're going to, so we're doing uh, the left plus width, minus one, minus header right padding, minus header icon width, minus header icon width. And then we want to do also minus header icon spacing. Um, and so now we have a little bit of spacing in between our icons. Um, okay, now our final icon is just a horizontal bar. Which is pretty easy. Just going to copy Did this. We, okay, um, and that horizontal bar should be, it looks like centered. Yeah, okay. Yep. 
So we're going to be do um, left plus width minus one minus this minus this. I should probably just do times three times two. And um, uh, for the top, we're going to be doing top plus the header vertical padding plus one um, plus uh, the header icon width divided by two. So that and that might be off by one. We'll see what happens. And this is going to be um, a the width is correct. The height should just be one. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. All right. No off by one errors today. Oh. Um, all right, cool. We got our little icons. That's nice. Um, so uh what should we do next? I guess um we should do a cursor um and have us able to control that. And then we will do um we'll move these windows into like a sprite or something that we can actually, you know, like interact with. Um, Sounds good. Um, if we keep on doing this for more than a few days, we, it'd probably be worthwhile to make an upload target with like uh, actually using that mouse support that Peli added. If we hook that up, it's not that much work to hook it up. To hey, if you do it, I'll use it. Okay, I'll, I'll think about it. Depends on how many days we do this. Yeah, I'm not going to do it, but if you do it, I'll use it. We had we had to do it eventually anyway. It's just we had to write an extension for it too. Blah, 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 blah. Um, that rah, 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 is also how I feel. Um, yeah. Okay, so we got our buttons. Um, we've got our thing. Let's go ahead and um, we're going to go to our draw window and we're going to take in um, some text as well, which is going to be a uh, program name. String and this is going to be test.exe. We're going to go ahead and uh, draw this text. So we're going to do screen.print. By the way, you might notice we're not doing anything related to camera. We are not going to be dealing with the camera in this game. Your screen is your screen. There is no camera moving around. So, and that is just for my own sanity. Okay, we're going to do multiple. Uh... Yeah, we can do multiple desktops or something, maybe. Yeah, that's easier than like a camera. And it's also like basically how OS is work anyway. You don't really have like a panning the view of a window. Except for your accessibility features. <sighs> OK, that's true. I forgot about the magnifying glass. Um, OK, header vertical padding. Uh, for the color, we're going to do theme dot foreground. For the fonts, we're going to do image dot font five. See how this looks. Um, and yeah, there we go. Um, I guess we're going to have to commit to doing uh, all caps. This is cap OS. Um, it is. It's too difficult to read it in font five if it's not all caps. So there you go. Test.exe, and that just happened to be the exact right size. So, I mean, it it did happen to be because we made it nine minus four. But I wasn't intending that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, all right. Cool. Okay. We got our our little thing. We might pretty it up later, but this is good for now. Um. So let's draw a cursor. A uh, question, do we want to do this? Do we want to actually draw one or do we want to just uh, do it programmatically like we do it everything else? No preference. And right, we're not doing any images today. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, draw this programmatically. Um, so I'm going to do function. No images allowed. This is draw. A only for, for, for lines and prints. Fine. So this is going to take a, an X and a Y. The X and the Y are going to be pointing to where the pointer is. Um, and then we will go ahead and just draw from there. 
So let's go over to our game dot on shade and we're going to do draw cursor and we're going to put this at 70. I don't know. All right, so with this draw cursor, um, let's take a look at our cursor that's currently on screen. We have one vertical side. We have one 45 Diagonal. degree anglish side. I don't know. Like more like 60 degrees or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, 60, 50, between 45 and 60, you're right. right. That one goes to a straight horizontal line. The um, vertical one goes to a uh, diagonal line. I'm looking at it right now, and you know, every single time we draw, try to draw one of these arrows, I'm like, it looks weird. But when I look at this thing closely, it, it looks, also weird. looks weird. This is not what I thought it looked like in my head. Um, maybe that's because we always think of it like looking at buttons, where it's a little finger. Yeah. Oh, we are gonna. We should. Should we account for uh, cursors? What? Should we make like a cursor type or something? Or oh, we we're, we're, we're certainly going to have to. Yes, this we'll rename this function to draw arrow cursor or whatever. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to be drawing from X, Y, and we're going to do. I'm, I'm just going to hard code some numbers for now, and then we'll put them in a constant later. So we're going to do um, uh, for the X one. This is going to be the vertical line, so we're just going to leave this one as X. And for the Y, we're going to do um, Y plus twenty. And for the color, we're going to do. Uh, black and I hope this is where I think it is on the screen. Yeah, okay. That's way too tall. Right, 20. What was I thinking? Do you have that? 10? Can you imagine the OS where you have your cursor is like eight times as big as any of the buttons you have to click on? That would be it could be it. I agree. Richard, okay. are you for refusing to use images? Why would you need images when everything's a beautiful, beautiful line? Mm -hmm. We're drawing everything programmatically, but it's going to break down as soon as we realize that we can't do a programmatic fill for this. Huh? Ah. Uh, e. Ah. <laughs> well, just, just, uh, just for loop it. Just right, two got, for loops. We got to draw an image. Saying it out loud made me realize the issue. Classes are how objects are implemented. Kind of? Um, JavaScript objects are just kind of objects. JavaScript objects are just uh, hash tables. Yeah, they're just blobs. You just put stuff in them. <sighs> um, OK. So that didn't work. So we're going to do I this mean, one. Okay, we could have done it. But nobody wants to see that code. Uh, yeah, and it would have taken us like two days. Because it's we could have uh, done it by one fifty. I think we could have we could have fit it. It would have been a pre Hassan thing. Hassan would have joined in right when we uh, finished it. When you say could have done it, what what would your strategy have been? Like, huh? Google how to do triangle fills. There's not that much going on here, right? It's you do a for loop with draw a line. Um, I don't think that would work. OK, this is uh, awful. I think that looks exactly like the cursor I'm looking at right now. Unfortunately, <laughs> we've uh, yeah, we've established that the, the, the real cursor looks. Messed up. But not that messed up. See, the, the problem is it's hard to do angles with our um, pixel size here, you know? Yeah. It's hard to draw curses in arcade. I don't think that the, that like, the OS designer is using Arcade to draw these these cursors. I think it's just hard to draw cursors. Like that's what I'm understanding from this. Yes, we could. We can't actually do this, but um, there is, of course, the OG pixelated cursor. But that also 
kind of looks weird. Where can I find a good one? Um, yeah, also, I think this is using more pixels than we are. Not yeah, sure. This one's not the real one, though, because this one has the, the rainbow ball, too, and the original one did not have the rainbow ball. It's this one. Um, okay. Yeah, it's using more pixels than us, but still. Notably, and this might be where we're going wrong, it is not doing an outline. But the other ones were, though. That's true. I think you kind of need an outline is the thing. This looks so it bad. Did, it did look like the other ones were doing uh, black. Some of them were doing black cursor white outline, I saw. I don't know. I don't think that would fix the, our problem. I don't, I don't think it would fix the problem at all. No, no, no. Why? Why is this so hard? Tell me, Joey. Tell me why. Pixels, man. I zoom way out. Nah, it still looks weird. Oh, that's, that's even looks even worse. <laughs> it's like it's one of those rare scenarios when it's zoomed in, it looks okay, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh gosh. Oh. Yeah, it's a little better, maybe. Here to that. And this is 16 by 16, which is pretty big compared to what we had. Can we uh can we done just to see the scale fits? Because I was thinking it was like gonna be on the order of like nine by nine, to be honest. Oh yeah. Right? Like uh your cursor is generally about the same size as the, the button. As um as like the X buttons, I think. Yeah, you're right. All right, let's Scale you know, that oh, this is not going to go well. All right, try again. We're starting over. Do that. Do that. That. We need somebody to come in here and just draw the rest of the owl on this one, I think. There you go. Zoom. Way out. Zoom way. No, no, no. Doesn't look like anything. Is that the Tumblr logo? It does look like the Tumblr logo. I was like, my brain was trying to pattern match it to something. Um, I'm glad you got there. Just embrace it. Tumblr OS. Oh, OK. Um, see, but unsigned Arduino, that's still twice as big as we can use. He's got a good one. He, he posted a sprite library at 10 by 16, but like, mm, really good. That is a nice one. We could always just make everything bigger. Uh, maybe you can paste that in and try and just make, scale it down. With yeah, like sure. Let's, let's give it a shot. Can you drop that in our meeting chat, Joey? Yeah. You um, can just drop the image straight. We'll see if I can drop the image or if it's going to do some weird thing and make it a table. Just do it right, Joey. Just do it right. OK, this should work fine. Whatever. Hopefully. No, it doesn't. Uh. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> I don't know why this is so hot. OK, this one? But this might do the exact same thing as it did earlier for some reason, but it shouldn't. There we go. Yeah, we got it. So we'll change this to 10 by 16, I think it was. We can go ahead and delete this and paste it 
Yeah, this is oh, quite a good, this is quite a good one. Um, so we're going to go ahead and select, and we're going to. Just this see is no what happens. no way this will work. Probably not, but absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it would have worked if this was like the uh, the sprite scaling. We, uh, let's just draw this to the screen, okay, and see what it looks like. All right, what do I name this? Edit. Maybe this play. is gonna maybe this is gonna end up like my dumb idea of OS where the buttons where the buttons are small but the cursor is huge. It's like it's like that setting on uh, on Mac where you like where you wiggle your cursor and then goes huge for a second. So you, you know, so you can find it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. First time I saw that, I was like, why, why, why? And then <laughs> someone explained it to me. Um, but I've never used it for its intended purpose, I think, ever. Yeah, I've only used it because I was like, <laughs> big cursor. Yeah, I just used it because I was bored. Um, all right, and then for X, we're going to do 70, for Y, we're going to do 70, and how big is this cursor? Let's see. Uh, sometimes the simulator gets stuck when you're in JavaScript, and you have to do that. I say we go with it. It's not that huge. Yeah, whatever, that's fine. It's pretty big, but it's, yeah. It's pretty big, but we can wait for somebody else to draw us a small cursor and maybe someday replace it. Thank you, Unsigned Arduino. You saved the day. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, with that, we're kind of out of time today. Um. So we're tune back in on Friday. We're going to keep working on this, and we'll hopefully get to some more exciting stuff. So, what features? Uh, we have a few minutes left, so let's just decide what features do we want to get into this guy. Um, so obviously normal window stuff. So dragging on top bar, click on another window and it comes up above the one you're on. That's just the index stuff, mm -hmm. which is easy. Assuming that we, if we just make this a renderable, that should work. Yeah. If we, if we make each window a renderable. Mm -hmm. We'll just have one global variable and we just increment a number each time and we set whatever the last one we clicked the. All it is is, is comparing numbers. Yeah, this is fine. Mm -hmm. And we'll just put our, our um, uh, HUD UI at like 10 million. Full V8 JS interpreter, maybe, yeah. Um, if I end up getting annoyed enough with it, I might add the mouse support extension. Mm hmm. Um, which isn't that hard, but it's also it's still just like uh anyway. So I want I want there to be a little icon thing at the bottom, which is like, you know, little start menu. Things. Oh yeah, yeah. And then um, for what programs do we want to do? I think that's important. Um notepad, we need paint. Notepad, paint, um, a calculator, the classics. Yeah. yeah. Um, we need a calendar. Um, a clock. NVIDIA GeForce Experience. Yeah. Uh, we need a music player so you can put your songs in there, and then we can have a visualizer with the music player, just because I know you hate visualizers. We need a V8JS interpreter. Oh, darn it. Um, um, and Lucas wants us to put in the three brave cats. Uh, if you go over, you know, five concurrent programs, we need to make the screen blue. Yeah, that's fine. We can do that. Um, all right, cool. So we have our work cut out for us. Um, the boring part is going to be finishing up the window stuff. So moving things around, Xing, minimizing, maximizing, all of that good stuff. But we Actually, will. The task manager would be really fun with just like a fake bar graph and like oh, ooh, sure, yeah. goes up. X, everything is slowed down to like five VX. We're not going to finish this next stream by no means. But I think what this is going to do is we're going to um, after Friday we're going to go back to working on our Metroidvania game. But we'll just we'll just jump back into this one every once in a while so we can do a TypeScript stream. You know, um, 
So we'll just come back to this one, you know, work on it for a little bit and then keep going. Hopefully we can get through the Windows stuff quick. So whenever we're adding a new thing, it'll just be like adding a new program, you know? So that'll be a nice self-contained JavaScript stream. We do need a right-click menu and a set background image. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we definitely need to set the background image. Though that means we need background images. That's fine. We, we're going to add paint. Oh, so they can draw their own? Yeah. I'm sure our paint will be very useful and good. If or you if add the mouse thing, it will be. It'll be fine. Yeah. What if there's an option to see RAM and normal arcade like stats? That would be neat. Well, well, we got something for you right here if you click menu. <laughs> So Actually, when you when you do working. the available RAM in the simulator, does it just always return? Um, it's, the... it's a, I think it's a big number. I think it's a... um, let's but see. it's not like real, right? It's not actually. No, I'm not doing like we're not doing like a hardware query or anything like that. Well, I didn't know if it was like counting the number of live pointers or something in the sim or whatever. I don't know. Um. Where is that implemented? So I, I reference it in particle effects. That's where I'll find where this is. Uh, um, in particle effects, I determine how many particle effects can live at once by it. Yeah, speaking of stuff that only works in simulator, I'm probably going to soon redo the sequencer for the simulator so that in um, it has better timing. You might have noticed that when you're game is running slow um your uh tempo right now will get weird with the song editor um and so i'm planning on fixing that it, it'll already be much better on hardware but um in uh the sim it's a little bit um wonky sometimes so i'm probably going to do like a check to see if we're running on the sim and then i will um go ahead and uh do it all inside of the quote unquote C++. Yeah. Um, Luna says, yes, I need this fixed now. It's so buggy. Um, okay. I assume you're referring to the tempo stuff kind of moving around, um, Lucas? Uh, OK, so for RAM size, we either return config RAM bytes, which is going to be the value from uh, the hardware specification, or 32 times 1024 times 1024, so 32 megs. Gotcha. Um, yeah, Lucas, uh, sorry you're hitting that. I will try to prioritize the fix. It should run better when it's not, the editor is not also running. So if you do it on the share page, it should run much better. But, um, mm -hmm. yep. And uh, thank you, Hassan, for tracking your quarter. Oh, you now owe $4. Thanks. Oh, we can't hear you, by the way. We can't hear you, Hassan. Oh, yep, yeah, yeah, you need that. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I've never seen that. Oh my gosh. I honestly forget it's off. Uh, I said I was at a physical arcade yesterday, so I actually do have a lot of physical quarters right now. What <laughs> games did you play? Uh, have you heard of, uh, there's a 5v5 game called Killer Queen. Oh, oh yeah. 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 No, it was, it was a lot of fun. It, it, it was mostly, it was me and someone else who played before. And then six people who had never played it before. So it was quite a lot of fun introducing them to Killer Queen. It's like a, it's like a, you can win in three ways. You either can collect berries, you can get your snail to the goal. Yeah, or you played. can, you can take the other queen's three lives and you win. It was a lot of, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It's kind of cool. like, um, it's kind of like a extreme, a, a much faster MOBA that you play in person. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there, there's um, like essentially lanes. There's lanes, um, yeah. There's different strategies. It's a lot of fun. Um, it, it gets people like either cheering in celebration or just like <laughs> cries of anguish and defeat. Oh. All right, well, that's going to do it for us today. I am Richard Irishman on the Make Code Forum. <laughs> I'm Hassan. Came so tardy <laughs> at the Make Code Forum. Actually, no, it's Hassan on the Make Code Forum, not Came so tardy. But... And I'm Joey at J Wonder on the Make Code Forum. And we will see you guys uh, on Friday for some more TypeScript stream. Bye. Ooh, I miss TypeScript stream.